Hello and welcome to Nature Source Care. My name is Dr. Fonda Lohman. I'm a naturopathic physician. And today's talk, I was going to uh, go over homeopathy for healthy caretakers, specifically the Bach Claw Remedy Red Chestnut. So let's go ahead. And a note before, beforehand, actually, um, the information presented here is for educational purposes only and should not be considered medical advice. For any symptoms that persist or worsen, please consult with a qualified medical professional. It is always best to determine the root cause of any disease and to develop a comprehensive treatment plan. While home homeopathy slash Bach flower remedies can be very effective, they may not be appropriate for everyone or as a single therapy, so please keep that in mind. All right, so let's talk about red chestnut. Um, uh, first, just a few words about Bach flower remedies generally, if you've never heard of them. Bach flower remedies are a kind of homeopathy, which is a whole paradigm of energy medicine. And I have a lot more background and history in my first Bach flower remedy video on walnut Bach flower remedies. But the general concept of um, Bach flowers is that disease stems from an internal struggle. Um, and so I find these remedies very helpful for mental, emotional, and spiritual conditions that show up um, in my office. The keynote for this particular remedy and how you might you know, identify it or somebody who might be helped by this remedy is excessive fear-based caretaking. All right. So the inner state of being that's uh, problematic is that uh, the person is making connections based on fear instead of spirit. So, um, yeah, uh, so let's get into more specific symptoms, though. So again, red chestnut symptoms. So, you know, we have, when somebody like this shows up in the office or in front of you, you know, they can come across as somebody who's very empathic, very altruistic, because it's pretty obvious that they're spending a lot of time caretaking for other people. Maybe one person, maybe several people, maybe everybody that comes across their path. Um, and they may come. They may initially seem very altruistic and caring and that sort of thing. And not that they aren't, but part of what's driving them is again some type of fear. Okay. And so sometimes they're just it's like a general anxiety um, where they're always fearing the worst, and they have you know something like catastrophic thinking. And because of this fear, that's what drives their behavior. And the thing though is that. The caretaking is so excessive that it actually starts to become harmful, not just for them, but the person that they're, or the people that they're caretaking of. Um, and also this like, you know, excessive fear can sometimes become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, and then again, because of this excessive fear that drives, that kind of creates a different relationship dynamic where people can become enmeshed or symbiotic and there's really not a clear um, set of boundaries between um, the caretaker and others, or at least you know whoever they're care caretaking of. Um, and so it can be signs of something like codependence or enabling and also involve enabling. So basically by caretaking so much and being so involved um, in supporting somebody else, one, they're not supporting themselves generally, and so their health, their well-being, their energy, vitality, emotional well-being all tends to suffer. But the other thing is that the other person, if they're so supported by somebody else, it may sound good initially, but sometimes it starts to stunt the other person's growth and development of self, development of independence, um, and various levels. And so, um, and sometimes somebody can be so so much of a caretaker that it almost sort of, um, again, the enabling aspect, it sort of almost um, lets people off the hook of bad behavior. <laughs> so, you know, you, you gotta you gotta know um, kind of when w how to support, when to support, and when to step back um, for both the caretaker and uh, the person that's being taken care of. This anxiety or fear that drives this behavior might also be possibly PTSD um, related. Maybe there was some incident that happened in the past in, in the past of the caretaker or the um, person being taken care of and that fear of something bad happening, um, you know, is again, what's driving this really intense, excessive uh, 
caretaking. And this can show up in different, you know, in different kinds of relationships. So we have like today, we, we talk about like helicopter parents and things like that. So, you know, parents who are like very involved, almost too involved, you know, they almost call it excessive parenting where every sniffle, every, um, you know, small detail is overlooked by um, parents. Sometimes this is because the parents are controlling but you know if if that sort of behavior is again driven by fear then this remedy might be helpful it can be other types of family relationships it can be relationships between friends it can be relationships between partner spouses it can even be a professional relationship so maybe you're a professional caretaker and you know it is possible to have a difficult time knowing when to step back because again um you know, as professional caretakers, we can offer support, we can offer education, that sort of thing. But at a certain level, um, somebody else, you know, the person themselves needs to take responsibility, um, you know, in whatever ways they can to help themselves. Yeah. So, so the thing is, is that this caretaking, even though, you know, we maybe idolize it in some ways and, you know, support it, encourage it or whatever, and we're like, oh, this person's so great and they're so, you know, caring and this and that. Um, because it's excessive and because, again, it starts to stunt the health, well-being, growth of both people, then suffering happens. Um, and so you're actually suffering by loving or helping other people. And again, there's this general kind of um, experience of just, you know, lacking appropriate boundaries, yeah, or lacking individual identities maybe somebody completely identifies with being a caretaker um, and maybe their fear is you know i'm not a good person or i'm not who else would i be if i didn't do the caretake so those are other kinds of fears you know there are all kinds of fears specific fears um, that can be driving this behavior but again this is a fear-based um, behavior regardless of what's driving the fear um, and so again you're actually harming yourself um, and the person that you're taking care of. And this can even be kind of show up as almost like a martyr, you know, kind of a martyr situation um, where again, somebody's sacrificing so much of themselves that they're really, um, just by the nature of that interaction, they're putting somebody else up higher than themselves in terms of worth, in terms of value. Because if you had equal values as the person you're taking care of, then you would like, you know, help yourself, help them in whatever way you could. And it would, you know, it wouldn't get to the point where both of you were potentially suffering. Um, you know, and again, there's some really dire situations um, where this might be, you know, like a temporary thing. But again, um, if it's getting to the point where it's really um, hindering or harming somebody, you might consider this running. There can also be this sort of like needing to be needed type thing. Um, again, that's a fear-based thing, like who would I be if I wasn't a caretaker? Who would I be if I didn't, you know, um, do the rounds and take care of my neighbor's lawn, even if I'm injured, <laughs> you know, and that sort of thing. And it's just sort of like, you know, maybe you need to take care of yourself first and once you get better, then you can help your neighbor um, if, you, if you truly want to, um, not because like, there's the fear of you being a bad person or an adequate person or it's just you're living up to some habit you know uh, rather than you know that's truly what you want to do and you have you know it's it's um like when i used to teach uh, public yoga classes and in person we used to talk a lot about you know making sure that you fill up your own cup um before you know you're helping other people otherwise you will get depleted and I've had patients, I, I can think of several, um, I think most of them were mothers who had several kids and, you know, the mothers gave and gave and gave and gave and they literally ended up in the hospital from overgiving. Um, you know, and even though I warned them, I'm like, you know, you got to slow down or, you know, pace yourself or something like that's great that you're such a, you know, caring, devoted parent, but at this level, you know, uh, you're going to harm yourself and they ended up in the hospital literally. And so it's like, you know, in there, and they would say, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it, you know, I, I agree with you, but then they would keep doing it, <laughs> you know, and then they ended up in the hospital. So, so that was like, you know, it had to get that bad before it, they finally woke up and had to change their ways, um, otherwise they'd keep ending up in the hospital. And so I used to talk to them about how, 
you know, even when uh, parents have, you know, certain kinds of special needs kids, like uh, potentially Down syndrome kids or something like that, um, you know, sometimes um, people feel bad or feel like, um, you know, they need to coddle these kids and stuff like that. Really, the advice that they're given from professionals in, in, in those fields is that you should really kind of think of yourself more like a teacher rather than a caregiver or more, th more than like a servant because there's no end to that. There's no end to being a servant. There's no end to like how many loads of laundry need to be done and dishes need to be washed and that sort of thing. But, you know, again, even if a child has some level of um, potential disability or some other, some other person has some level of, you know, um, uh, disability, temporary or permanent, um, you know, the idea is it's like you teach them how to do it, um, whatever they can do, whether it's like, laundry or something else you know tie their own shoes or whatever it is the more that you can teach them how to take care of themselves it frees up both of you and so i've had that conversation many times um, but mostly i have that conversation with parents um, but again this sort of dynamic can show up you know on various levels so it's almost this sort of restructuring or reframing of what it means to be a loving person sometimes and that sometimes people are like oh if i'm not like you know, killing myself and doing myself in, then I'm not being dedicated. And it's like, no, uh, actually, you're really just harming yourself. And you're also potentially teaching other people that that's the only way to love, uh, be a loving person, which can be, you know, kind of perpetuate this um, dangerous level of, of overgiving. Um, you know, again, it's kind of this idea of like never really cutting the cord. Um, and so in that respect, you know, especially when it's like a parent child relationship and, you know, it's hard to let go and there, that's a difficult process anyway, as, as children get older, um, become young adults, um, that's a natural process. But when that process is thwarted and, uh, you know, uh, you never get past it, then that can be a problem. Uh, this, and, and along those lines, actually, this remedy can be helpful with things like weaning, like weaning from uh, childbirth, uh, not childbirth, excuse me, weaning from uh, breastfeeding, um, both for the child as well as the mother. Um, and so again, there can be elements of being overprotective. That might be another type of caretaking that happens, not just like medical caretaking or, you know, um, caretaking of children and stuff like that. Um, and there can also be like a bit of a hypochondriac type energy especially like this kind of falls in line with always fearing the worst and catastrophic thinking so any little cut scrape you know flash of the eyes or whatever all of a sudden that becomes a big deal and like this whole storm of the caretaking can kind of happen and blow up um yeah so the risk of of not you know helping is again depletion of energy and vitality um, also, if somebody, sometimes people get so involved with helping other people that they're actually kind of avoiding a higher life calling that they may have. It can be a type of avoidance, you know, um, taking care of other people. Um, so that's a possibility. Um, and again, emotional stunting for both parties, the caretaker as well as the person being taken care of. And again, there's this potential of like teaching others, you know, you know, whether it's your children, if you're helping your spouse or grandmother or something like that, that loving, you know, loving somebody, it only, it's only valuable, like if you're hurting or harming or suffering yourself. Um, so that's a potentially dangerous thing to perpetuate, um, you know, for like generations to come. Um, and then the potential outcome of taking a remedy like this is somebody's going to be more calm, more secure, more serene, more encouraging rather than, you know, rushing and caretaking because of all this anxiety and fear. Um, they s start developing their own interest, both parties, the caretaker, because once they step back, it also gives the other person room to grow and change in different ways and take care of themselves, mm -hmm. um, including developing interests and following those. Um, and they're not just like other interests, like hobbies and stuff like that, but developing the self. It's like, you know, if I didn't spend all this time taking care of other people, like what, what do I really want to do in this world? 
that's an important question and sometimes it's a scary question it's an overwhelming question and so again sometimes people can dive into all this caretaking to avoid the question um, you know and you, you can become more supportive without enabling you can still be there for people without you know again uh, stunting them yeah um, and you realize like there are human and physical limitations to how much support you can give to anyone um, you know that's part of the human experience you know we are finite beings <laughs> um, you can send people love and light and that sort of thing and good wishes but you know we all have the same we all only have a certain number of hours in the day um, whether it's you me or the president <laughs> you know you know and it's how do we spend that time you know that's that's the real question and so also by stepping back like sometimes I have uh, conversations it tends to be more parents that I see this with um, you know they get really worried about you know what their kids are doing whether they're small or older you know grown and out of the house you know they can really worry and it's just sometimes we have this conversation of like you know you're only the earth parent <laughs> you know you are the the physical mother father you know you're you're the hands and the eyes you know and ears of a greater force whether you want to call that divine or spirit or whatever you want to call it um, and so you can only do what you do and so um, what you can I mean there are limits to this and so if you can try to tune into you know what is what is my part to do here you know what's really truly going to be the best for all parties concerned what's going to be sustainable um, and sometimes you know like in acute situations it's hard you know it's hard to maintain balance and you know there are emergencies and things that need to be taken care of but you know especially when um, this is chronic um, you know this is when you might consider remedy like this and again this this idea of both parties becoming self-sufficient physically emotionally mentally um, still you know um, stay interested in each other's lives still support each other but again the more that you can in, um, empower rather than enable empower somebody to take care of themselves um, you know as much as possible some people clearly not I mean if they clearly have no physical capacity maybe they're in a coma or whatever um, it's it's not possible but maybe at that point it's um, time to enlist other support or other people you know and create a team rather than you know take all the burden on your own shoulders um, you know again every situation is going to be different but in, in certain situ certain situations regarding caretaking this remedy can be helpful um, there are other remedies you might consider you know if, if somebody seems like they're doing excessive caretaking that's fear-based um, and most of these um, I've done videos on already um, first though uh, do not confuse red chestnut with other chestnut bach flower remedies there are four chestnut remedies um, out of 38 I believe it is so um, there's chestnut bud there's sweet chestnut there's white chestnut and there's red chestnut um, I think my last video I did on white chestnut which was all about analysis paralysis and people overthink and almost a little bit of an OCD type um, situation um, I haven't done videos on chestnut bud or sweet chestnut so those will be upcoming but there are four different chestnut remedies so don't you know, mix those up um, but other remedies for generally feeling overwhelmed not just sort of anxious but um, I have a whole video where I talk about four different remedies elm, hornbeam, oak, and olive elm is related to over identifying with a professional role and not being able to kind of step back from that and give oneself enough time to rest and rejuvenate and that sort of thing um, hornbeam is when people are overstimulated mentally um, from like going through final exams or something like that um, oak is for people who are kind of rigid and dogmatic they have this kind of attitude about achieving goals and so they can't can't let things go even if, if they're not really good for them anymore um, olive is for people who are like have this chronic kind of overwork and just exhaust themselves um, uh, so those are possibilities if it's more of a situation of somebody being overwhelmed um, uh, there's also remedies for not trusting intuition that I've uh, made videos about one is Serato um, 
And this is about, again, if you're not, maybe your intuition is that or this person's intuition is telling them like, I need to, you know, back, you know, back down or I need to step back and like give myself a break. Like maybe they realize it, but they don't trust it. They don't follow it. And so Serato is about Claire Romy that can help with trusting and following your intuition. So especially if it's not, if the intuition is about setting um, more healthy boundaries and you're not following that, um, Serato can be a remedy that might be helpful. And Larch is also a possibility. That's also about trusting your intuition, like and not following your intuition. But that's that's for a different reason. That's for basically feeling like um, you're sort of like a second class citizen, like you're you're not as valuable um, as other people. And so that's really gets into not the reason why you're not trusting your intuition is because you don't have as much self esteem or self worth, sense of self worth as other people do. And so you won't let yourself follow your intuition because you don't think you deserve it. So that's another deep thing. Um, I also did a video on neediness and one of the remedies in that um, video, um, and maybe I should put the other, uh, I might have to redo these notes before I post this video, but I did, a, I did a video on neediness and there were two remedies in there. One was chicory and that was for a needy mother and so that might, you know, that, that might be kind of like a helicopter parent type. It doesn't have to be a mother. I mean, that's just, you know, kind of the easy terms that have been thrown around a lot over the years, um, not just by me, but other people. But it's more of a control-based caretaking where this sort of like, you, the reason why you're caretaking others is so that they sort of owe you, not even sort of, that they owe you, <laughs> you know, and like you kind of, you know, get them under your thumb and you can, you know, they're like, oh, I did this for you, remember? And so it's like, they'll sort of like kowtow to you basically because you're, again, doing the caretaking more out of control rather than uh, fear. But also the other remedy in there, um, I wasn't thinking about it specifically, but that can also be important is that, yeah, again, there can be the other side of it where maybe the person who um, is receiving the caretaking maybe their energy is being excessively needy. And so the other remedy in that uh, the video on neediness that I did was actually Heather. And Heather is, you know, if Chicory is the needy mother, Heather is the needy child, where somebody on some level needs attention. And so they'll, you know, instead of trying to be self-sufficient, like they just need attention so badly on whatever level, um, that they're going to keep drawing people in and draining their resources of time and energy and that sort of thing. So I'll try to remember to put that in. But so there are other remedies. And again, as I've always mentioned in these Bach flower video remedy uh, videos, Bach flower remedy videos, the key to um, Bach flower remedy um, kind of uh, analysis and stuff is you got to really look at the subtleties of somebody. Um, and match up the subtleties of their behavior, what's driving their behavior on the deepest level with one of these remedies, and that's when the magic happens. All right, so there you go. Uh, red chestnut as well as others that might be close, similar, or otherwise helpful. So as always, I want to thank you for the time and uh, your time uh, for listening to this talk. Um, I hope you find it helpful. I hope you find it useful. Um, you know, maybe it just has you thinking about different things that could be, you know, driving behavior that's similar to this, like caretaking in general. I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you are a caretaker on some level. Um, so uh, hopefully it's helpful to you and others uh, that you find. Um, I have another YouTube channel on Vedic Astrology. If you're interested in that topic, uh, you might check that out. It's called Heartlight Vedic Astrology. Um, and otherwise, um, I, I do appreciate all of the support um, that people, um, you know, coming to this channel offer me, um, whether it's subscribing to the channel or liking the videos or, or posting some comments or just saying, you know, thanks. Um, I appreciate all that, you know, because uh, again, it's a, uh, I'm used to uh, doing talks in person. So even though there's a little bit of time delay, <laughs> you know, it's nice to get feedback from people and know that, um, uh, my efforts in putting these videos together are helpful to you. So um, take care, um, and until the next one, all the best.